Welcome to Let's Get Writing. I'm your host, Catherine Taylor, and we're coming to you from central Newfoundland, Canada. Let's Get Writing is a show that celebrates everything there is about writing, how books get created, how authors get inspired, and whether you're into songwriting or books or poetry uh, theater, you name it. I want to talk to you and I want to hear your stories. And that's what I'm doing today. And my guest today is coming all the way from Henderson, uh, Tennessee. I always want to say Henderson, Nevada, because that's my most familiar place, but all the way from Henderson, Tennessee. And she is a very interesting lady. She develops courses for businesses, small and medium and large size businesses and uses her creativity in that way. But she's also contributed to a wonderful book that we're going to talk about called Bright Spots. So I'm going to bring Mary right up here and say hello. Here we go. Oh, hi, Mary. How are you? You coming up there? Great. Let me just see if I can bring you up. And there you are. Okay. I'm no, working from I love it. when technology works. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. I'm working for from a little bit of a different angle here today with a, a new camera. So not quite as uh, easy for me to maneuver around. But um, welcome. So <laughs> well, thank, thank you for the warm welcome. Yes, you know, sometimes it's hard when you're doing these interviews because it's like you're not getting all those cues at the same time. But exactly. thank you for the warm welcome. And I, I understand the technology challenges. I live in the, the world of technology pretty much behind the scenes all the time. So being out in public, even if it's virtual, is, is a, a treat for me. So thank you. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad we pulled you out from behind the scenes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, the, and work that's done behind the scenes is so important to work that's done publicly because whatever is done behind the scenes makes it so easy. And I have to admit that going virtual, I miss some of the things that I had working from a studio. But you get used to it. And I think the audiences um, understand how it is and they welcome the immediate, immediacy of what we're doing. And... What we're doing is talking about writing, but first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So real briefly, um, I grew up in Chicago, moved to Tennessee about 20 some years ago. I live just north of Nashville, Tennessee. So for any country music fans out there, I used to work at the Opryland Hotel. Um, so got to meet a lot of country stars in that career. And what I have been doing now for the last several years, I've been a college professor. I've helped write, ghost write some textbooks. And my son and I, about three years ago, started our own company called the Lavender Dragon Team. And we are course creators. So we work with businesses and we work with individuals to bring your ideas to life. And so we do a lot of writing, but not in the form of books. Um, so being able to be involved in a book was like an exciting time for me. I, yeah, I imagine, you know, when you talk about writing for courses and so on, and, and, and that's not specifically what we're going to talk about, but I sometimes follow my heart. And I just want to ask about that when you're, when you've been doing that and creating courses, it's a very, very specific type of, of writing. Uh, what kind of attributes do you bring to that, that uh, genre? Oh, that's a great question. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it's fun because we work with a wide range of clients across a vast array of industries. So the attributes are critical thinking, um, how to take complex topics and turn them into small bite-sized chunks, and how to bring the courses to life so that it's not just like click the next button or fall asleep during a boring 20 or 30 minute video. We make it engaging, interactive, and put the, the learning in the shoes of the learner and less in the shoes of the computer. Wow. <laughs> that, that sounds like quite a lot to bring to together. And I'm sure your background in education and so on adds a lot to that. It does indeed. And then just having wide and varied interest in being, I think, really well read makes a big difference too. Absolutely. And I think in any area of writing, being wide read is extremely important. They always say, if you're writing, read a lot about what you write, read other authors. There's no bad writing that you can't read because the more you're exposed to writing in all its forms, the easier it becomes to kind of fit in there and find your path and maybe even evaluate your own writing. 
against other authors, which again is a debatable point because I think we should just write what is ours from the heart um, and not always be too concerned with what's out there because that can be a very difficult mindset. And sometimes I think as writers working in isolation, we can get caught in that particular trap, which I want to call it that because comparing yourself to others is not always a great way to go when you're in such a vulnerable profession. That is so true. Um, even creating courses for people, you're still writing for other people and you've got to learn to take your feelings and emotions out of the work and remember who you're writing for. And, and that's been a, a hard lesson to learn over the years. Has it now? It has. Because, you know, I think as any writer or creative, we really put our heart and soul into what we're doing. And then to get feedback, whether it's from an editor or a client to say, this isn't what I expected, or this isn't what I wanted, or, you know, that that essay that you just spent hours writing is not hitting the target. You know, you got to learn how to take some of that like, oh, but it's me and, and step mm -hmm. away from it and say, okay, what can I do to make it better? True enough, who you're writing for is so critical in any, you know, in any genre. And if you're writing fiction like I do, often people will say, well, who's your audience? And I'm thinking, well, I don't know, women. Uh, you know, you, it's so hard to pin it down as to exactly who you're writing for. But I think if you find that niche, very successful writers do. They know who their audience is and they, their writing is sort of targeted there and it works very well. That's it. Now you have on recently contributed to um, as a group of essays, I guess, will have been from people all over the world have contributed to a book called Bright Spots. And uh, tell me a little bit about that book and how you got involved. Sure. So it was one of those serendipitous moments. One of my clients we had had just published a book of her own and we were doing some promo spots for her with some animated video and she's like Mayor, you really need to be part of this anthology because I know how your business has changed this this year based on where it was last year and I'm I'm this group of authors and we're writing about how the events of 2020 impacted our lives impacted our businesses and you've got a really good story to tell so I think you should get involved in it and her next question was have you ever written a book and I'm like no and so she followed it up with, well, writing a chapter is a great way to dip your toe into that water of what it's like working with an editor, working with a publisher, going through that whole process. And I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm game. Let's try it. So that's kind of how it got started. And then she's like, oh, I forgot to mention, you, you know, if you do this, you've got about uh, 20 days to get it all done. And I'm like, ah, so. <laughs> Working to time. You got to be familiar with that, doing courses for, for clients and so on. Deadlines are Definitely. just. Definitely. Yeah, you know, when I signed up, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I was coming in at the tail end of when they were finalizing their, their author group. So I thought, oh, I'll have a little bit more time to procrastinate. But no, it's like just dive right in. And in some, in some senses, that was probably better because I didn't have time to go, what am I going to write about? How is this, you know, what's it going to be? It's just like, here's my topic. Okay, let me put something on paper. <laughs> and you know that is often good when it's just there get it done get it out and you get moving rather than hesitating and thinking too deeply you know when you jumped in I guess working on an anthology and, and this was really your first published work in this type of genre how did you feel about it did you feel intimidated did you wonder how your work was going to fit in what were the thoughts in your mind yes oh intimidation yes that that whole imposter syndrome definitely kept mm -hmm. rearing its head it's like who am i to think that i can be an author with other people who have, have published books and know what they're doing and you know what if they don't like it or what if my chapter in the book everyone's like eh loser chapter I don't want to read it and so you have all those fears and thoughts going through your head and um, you know it, it really took some like mindset adjustment on my part too saying I'm contributing to something that is for the greater good not everybody's going to like what i write but if i can impact you know a handful of people who say as a result of reading what you read i was able to take a positive step and you know pursue my outrageous dream then i felt like i'd accomplished my purpose 
Absolutely. And, and often I think writers do exactly what you said. They, they sort of think, well, who am I to be there? Who am I to be doing this? And we underestimate our own abilities and, and those voices come through. And part of the reason for this show is to say, Hey, this is something that everyone shares, but just don't let it stop you. Let it just be there and then move right on through it. Oh, That's you know, so I'm so glad that you did. I read your contribution to the book and I read other people's works in there and I just thought it all flowed beautifully. And I just have to say about the book because I had no idea when I heard about it and I thought, I wonder what this is really. And I started to read it and I thought, what a book to read right now because people who contributed are responding to that whole feeling we've had about 2020 and how they have ideas for moving through it and moving forward and continuing into growth. And that's what I loved about your um, contribution. Um, it really did. It, it, it just really said, here's what happened to me and here's what I did. But uh, let's go back to how it started because you, you just, yeah, you said like, have you ever, ever had the urge to do something, you know, totally outrageous? And I was like, oh, that got me right from the start. I'm like, yes, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and that's that, that living that outrageous idea. I had a very comfortable corporate job managing a team of 20 very talented designers. And I just decided, you know, right before I hit my late 50s that I was going to walk away from it and start my own business. And so that, you know, when I told my friends, there's less like, you've lost your mind. You, you know, you're walking away from, you know, retirement, you're walking away. And I'm like, yeah, but if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. And then to make the story even more exciting, my son um, was working in a call center and decided he was fed up. And he came home one day and said, mom, I'm going to join the family business. And I just looked at him and said, what family business? I was just going to do freelance work and travel and enjoy life because my partner's retired already. And he's like, no, 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 I'm joining the family business. And so then it went from, I was just going to cherry pick jobs I wanted to work on to now I actually have to build a company and support the two of us. And, um, yeah, I've learned a lot along the way and it was like, okay. So it started as this little idea. I want to be an entrepreneur to I've got a thriving business and now I'm an author and it's like, holy cow, what has happened? <laughs> <laughs> and amazing. So you were, uh, you were about two years into that. Things were just yes. chugging along and bang along comes COVID. <laughs> yes. Along comes COVID. We had several corporate clients that we were working for and with building training for them, new hire training and whatever. And there was a week in March where I just didn't think I was going to make it because it was call after call after call from clients going, we love working with you, but we love working with you, but mm -hmm. we're shut down. And so it's like, Oh my gosh, how are we going to pay the bills? Because it wasn't even, we're going to finish out our contracts with you. It was just like, everything stops now. And it's like, ah, so there, there's, you know, a couple of weeks of panic. What are we going to do? And then it was, okay, I have skills. Let's pivot. I joined some groups. So one of the things I talk about in the essay is I met a group of marketers from all around the globe and we would meet weekly just to share ideas share connections share resources and so now i have got colleagues in india and in europe and in canada and in the states that we come together and work on things and we share leads and ideas with each other and they're the ones that kind of prodded me along to like well, why don't you work with individual course creators authors consultants and so we pivoted and so now we're back on the road to thriving again in our business wow and you know did you imagine that you, you know when you were sitting there and trying to think how am I going to get through this what what were some of the best things you did I know you mentioned the group was it just keeping your outlook of positivity so I think keeping my positive outlook or keeping a positive outlook, I also joined an online working session of other instructional designers just to kind of maintain that professional camaraderie and improve my skill set. I did spend, you know, about two months just polishing up my skills, learning new skills, things that I could bring to market. And then I just said, okay, you know, we've got to completely change how we approach business and here's what we're going to do. And fortunately, you know, some of my acquaintances helped spread the word and said, you need to go talk to Mary. And then I, you know, was in another group and they're like, oh yeah, we need you. 
Um, and then, so we got through all of that. And then the other, the, the essay was written before the, the other plot twist for 2020, which was getting a cancer diagnosis in June. And so then it was like, oh my goodness, now what are we going to do? So, you know, we added that on top of all of the other drama of the year and, you know, we're still plugging away and keeping a positive attitude and just having fun. Wow. Wow. That's a lot to, to handle. And especially when you step out on your own, but for anyone who's listening, who's taking things on, we can't control what happens. We can't always predict. We can have a plan, but a plan is just a plan. There's no way to know what the future is going to hold and what we're going to be dealing with. So I thought your essay, and I just want you to, um, talk a little bit about what, what you included. I thought it was very nice. And I like the part where you said, you know, think about five traits you have that have helped you through a difficult time. And I thought that was really lovely. Well, thank you. And that's, for me, it's, it's, it's that self-reflection and thinking about, because oftentimes when we get into a bad spot, um, either mentally or emotionally, we're very easy to blame ourselves. Like I can't do anything right or everything, everyone's against me, but we've been, all of us have been through bad times. The resources in you, you just have to remember them. You know, think about a time when, you know, think about that outrageous dream and then break it down into small steps because that's the thing that I think prevents a lot of people from following their dreams too. It's overwhelming. But if you can break it down and say, here's what I'm going to do this month. Here's what I'm going to do this month. Here's the characteristics of my personality that have got me through rough times in the past. I need to call them back up, sort of like your superpowers. Actually, that's a great way to put it, superpowers. And, you know, I've, I'm sure that people are out there watching and thinking and feeling, yeah, I can use a bit of advice like that. And I do want to come back to the book because as a whole, that is the theme of the book. It's bright spots. What can you take with you? And I love the fact that there are people contributing from so many places. And then also what's really neat is that each contributor, actually, they get to share their contact information. So in a sense, it also becomes a bit of a tool, both for the contributors, but also for the readers. Because if there's something that resonates, it's like, oh, I love Mary Nunnally. I'm going to reach out to her and all the contacts are there. So I, I love it. Was that part of the concept? That was part of the concept. And I've been surprised by the number of people who have read the book and reached out to me to say, that was a great essay, or can you answer a question for me? Or, you know, here, and, I'm, and it's not about trying to sell anybody anything. It's just, we're humans connecting with humans. And it's, it's really moved me to have people reach out on Facebook or something saying, I read your essay and it was so powerful. And here's what, here's my five traits. And I'm like, I don't even know you, but that's so cool. So um, that was part of the concept though, is that through this challenging time, being able to maintain or add to that human connection is going to be what gets us through to that next level. True. And a lot of people have mentioned that, that human connection. And honestly, with the book, it, it is not a sales pitch. And I definitely want to stress that as well, because it isn't. You buy the book, you gain so much from reading the articles. And if you choose to follow up, it's so nice that the resources are there. I actually thought it was a brilliant concept and, and loved it. Wish I came up with it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I mean, the publisher, Kathy Davis, who compiled it, I thought it was just just a great idea. I'd never seen anything like that before. And it's like, how cool. As an author, we also had a Facebook group and that was one of the things that we were encouraged to do is to reach out to the different authors as well and just get to know each other as, as people and say, hey, I liked your chapter. Or, you know, tell me how you came up with your idea. So it's kind of nice to now be in this circle of, of other contributors and being able to just like, you know, pick up and, you know, pick up the phone or shoot over an email saying, hey, I was just thinking about you. I just reread your chapter. How's life going? Mm -hmm. So it's ha like it had as many benefits for you as it would have for the people reading the book. I mean, it's been an amazing connector tool. It really is. And, and again, just reading everybody's stories, it's like, holy cow. Okay. I thought I had it rough, but then I read this story. I'm like, oh gee, my nothing, you know, compared to this person, everything's coming up roses. And so it, it really, on those days when I'm feeling kind of like meh, it's nice to just randomly go pick a chapter and read somebody's essay and go, okay, you know, there, there is something positive that can happen out of all this. 
Absolutely. And as well, like now that you've made these connections all over the world, like it's, it's just there forever for you. It's not anything that yes. that goes away. That's it. it. It reminds me a lot of when I was a kid having pen pals around the world, except now they're virtual pen pals, but we worked on a project together. And so that there's that additional connection. And you did it in a short period of time. We know that. And I'm assuming from everything we're saying that being part of an in anthology of this nature has been a positive experience for you. Yes, I would say it has been a very positive experience. In fact, um, the publisher is working on two other anthologies and I'm like, oh yes, I want to do this. The experience was so good the first time. I would like to write another piece because I don't think I'm ready to write a full book yet, but contributing 1500 words or a thousand words is my comfort. So it's like, okay. And the experience was so positive. It's like, yeah, I can do that if, if you know, I had a good impact. So maybe I can share some wisdom on another topic with people that didn't know anything about, you know, what I do more professionally. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting what you said. I'm, you said, I'm not ready to write a full book yet. Now, you don't know that for sure. <laughs> don't limit yourself. Um, because, you, you know, you've proven you can write some beautiful words um, and deliver beautiful messages. But isn't that a great way to start, you know, to break it down into chunks? And I think I think many writers will say that get an outline, break it down, put this much here, this, you know, it'll come together. Try not to possibly think of the whole thing right from the start because <laughs> you think, okay, I need 90,000 words. Oh boy, I just put down five. You know, that, right. that almost feels like you're scaling the mountain every day. And it's nice. That's why we have chapters. You know, write a chapter, write half a that chapter. That is a good point. That is a good point. But, you know, I think for me, it's also a question of time and desire because there's all these other things I'm working on. Like I am working with another international team and we're building a game. And so that's a lot of writing, but it's something I'm really passionate about is building this game. And so if I'm building the game, I don't have time to write a book, but I'll get there because after we build the game, I'll write about it. <laughs> I have no doubt, but again, another very interesting point with writing, how do we fit it into our lives and what role does it take? Because writing is not something that immediately brings you an income. In fact, very rarely is that bestseller an overnight bestseller. Generally, people are in this industry and business for years and years and years, writing and writing and gradually building a following. And, you know, sometimes you get lucky, but as with any profession, where you become better is using the tools and staying at it consistently. As I say, you know, I was an overnight success after 20 years. You know? Exactly, yeah, it's that whole yeah. 10,000 hours of practice concept. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think writers sometimes feel alone and maybe isolated and wondering, well, how are we gonna do things? Especially now in this new world, a lot of the book tours are no longer available, book signings, all those things. Maybe you're coming back in increments, but not in the way that they were before. And uh, we're having to adapt to do things virtually. So again, a book like you have with Bright Spots or you are part of and um, that Kathy Davis coordinated is, is very helpful. It's a very helpful tool for many, many people. It really is. Yeah, well, maybe you'll be thinking at some point to do a, a course from this. Actually, there's so many different directions this book could actually exactly. go in. You know, there's, there's a lot of different, yeah, no, that, that could be fun as a course or an app or something like that that will help other people. Ooh, we're so, thinking, we're, yeah, I'm we're coming thinking up with some good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I, we'll remember those. Yeah, I love the idea of an app for bright spots. Um, I mean, anything as simple as that. And here is another point that comes up. If you think about writing today, it's not simply a book anymore. And um, even though that can be one of the first tools, but there's so many other avenues that you can take it with all the social media, you know, with YouTube, with audiobooks. It's almost like the book is like the start. It can be in many cases the yes. start of many other things. Yeah, I mean, you could build a course or an empire on your your book or series of books too to take people to that next level. And you see that happening with a lot of the, you know, children's fiction like Harry Potter and all the things that have, you know, developed around it. It's like, here's a book. 
and then, you know, people create their own little academies. I remember when my son was younger, you know, we used to pretend that Hedgewig the owl was delivering him his schoolwork during the summertime and things like that. And it's like, because it was something he could relate to. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, having that book is, is the foundation of many, many other things. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting uh, time to be in this profession in some ways. Challenges just like you have experienced like and like, many, like anything. It's going to be a part of life. And now, Mary, if people want to reach out to you, what is like the your favorite way or the best way and easiest way for them to do that? Ah, probably the easiest way is to either find me on LinkedIn, Mary Nunley, or on Facebook. Um, when I created my company, I never like thought about how long of an email address I have. So finding me just Mary Nunley on Facebook or LinkedIn is probably the quickest and the easiest way. Cool. And we have all the links also provided um, for people who, if they're watching this show, they're just below. But if they're seeing this in another venue, it's easy enough to go to Catherine Taylor TV on YouTube and then the bios are down below. So we always try to provide the information as well for viewers. And if you had words to kind of leave us with about your experience or about where you are right now, what would they be? Oh, if I had words, that's one of my, so this is a quote that I've used for years. It's the, it's the infamous, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. And so you've got to take that risk. You've got to live those outrageous ideas. You've got to try something if you really want to change your life. So if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep ending up with the same results. Mm, that's the definition of insanity. Isn't it? Like well, there is that too. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just that that's kind of been my mantra since I was, you know, in high school. Yeah. And now you're living it. I mean, bravo to you for making such a career change in your 50s. That's a tough time to do it. And, uh, you know, we're scared to do it sometimes when we're much younger in life. But bravo to you for doing it and for making it happen. And thank you so much for taking time to share this with the uh, viewers and with Let's Get Writing. I so appreciate it. Thank you. And I appreciate you inviting me to be a guest, your delightful host. And um, I look forward to watching future episodes. Hey, hey, and we're going to keep in touch. How's the weather down there? Nice, still nice in Tennessee? It, it is beautiful. It's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, sunny, and just a lovely um, mid-fall day. Oh, well, you know, and because we are often challenged as uh, being Newfoundland and people think we live in igloos, hey, we're having the same thing up here. <laughs> I'm very pleased to report. <laughs> That is wonderful. Yes. Okay. Well, again, thank you Mary. So much. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you again soon.